Hi, my name is Thomas Johnson, and I'm the founder and CEO of Get Up and Get Fit's Wellness Coaching Concierge. I'm also a C-suite advisor and investor, and you're listening to How May I Serve You, where I'm constantly on the quest to surround myself with the best coaches while learning how to better serve our executive clientele by asking them, How May I Serve You? Today's show is sponsored by Get Up and Get Fit. Get Up and Get Fit will be providing students with textbooks and school supplies in Cambodia in honor of our guest today, as well as our philanthropic mission to impact at least 50,000 people per year. And today's guest is Tammy Alvarez. Tammy, how are you? I am great, Thomas. Thanks you for having me today. I'm really happy to be here and I love your mission. Love it. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. Tammy Alvarez shows leaders how to level up their performance for themselves and their businesses. Her spirited break all the rules approach blends decades of C-suite experience on Wall Street with a pragmatic results-based coaching style that helps business professionals create a big impact and love every Monday morning again. There we go. There we, let's go, and Tammy. You should, right? If you don't wake up ready to go on Monday, then we need to do something different. There we go. You're exactly, exactly right. It's all about having that momentum, you know? That's right. Absolutely. So, Tammy, I want you to just dive into this, right? I want you to tell us who you are, where you're from, and what got you started into the coaching business. Talk to me. Give me two minutes. All right. Version. Yeah, give me the quick quick and dirty, right? So, um, <laughs> Tammy Alvarez, I am talking to you right now um, from a sunny tropical island off the coast of Belize in Central Ooh. America. So, our home now is in San Pedro uh, on Ambergris Key, which is so, so much fun. I am a career Wall Street girl. So I grew up on Wall Street, spent 30 years there, um, last 15 as a C-suite executive in terms of being a managing director, all kinds of good stuff, got where I was supposed to be. And then I got there, I looked around, I'm like, you know, I'm kind of bored. Don't love this anymore. And so I decided to cash out of Wall Street, start my own coaching business and move to a tropical island about four years ago. <laughs> here we are. <laughs> here we go. You know, I love the fact that you took the leap of faith to go after your dream. You moved to a tropical island. Now you have that amazing tan and you wear my, my favorite color red right now, which brings out your tan, you know, and That's you're, doing it. It. Yeah. You're, you're doing it, you know, and a lot of people talk about it, talk about living the dream, but they're scared to take that step. So, okay. So what made you decide to go against the unknown, right? To step yeah. into the unknown. It's a great question because um, it was terrifying and everybody thought I was out of my ever loving mind. Um, and they're probably right. So I think what what caused me to do such a big shift is I don't do small things. I never have. Mm. And so, you know, I could still live in Manhattan and still go through the grind and still do all the stuff. Um, but I just figured, you know, I'm a very big advocate and I know this is going to sound a little morbid, but my family doesn't live very long. And so I'm like, you know, I'm going to do this now. There's no waiting to retirement. There's no mm. waiting until tomorrow. And, um, and while I couldn't have done this 10 years ago, I was in a perfect position to make a big change. My daughter was graduating college, so she was off the payroll, you know, and it was just time to shake it up a bit. And, uh, and I always believe that big change doesn't have to be permanent. So mm. let's give it a shot, have a good time while you're doing it. And if you have to hit the undo button, you can, and then just redefine how you want to go after your next big thing as life starts to unfold. So, so Tammy, let's talk about your upbringing because everyone don't have this type of uh, mentality, this mindset. What, what provided you this, this go against the green mindset? You know, I, I, I want to hear about the nurturing process. Talk to me about that. You know, the nurturing process was hard knocks. Um, grew up poor, never went to college. Um, I finally got my college degree when I was 40 years old okay. and I was scrappy. And that's, I think, what it boiled down to. My mom and dad had separated when I was a teenager and I saw what, how my mom struggled. And I was like, I am never going to be that person. Mm. And, you know, I mean, she did, I mean, just, we were homeless for a bit. It was a hot mess. Mm. And so um, seeing how hard she worked and, you know, how much she struggled, it was really my motivation not to, you know, play the victim and say, well, it's me, but say, hmm, that's not going to be me. And I do think mm. I overcompensated a bit on that because I turned into an incredibly competitive, ambitious person in terms of my career. And because I had, I felt like I was playing where I had nothing to lose. 
I was already, you know, punching over my weight. I was doing things I never thought I was going to be able to do before. Um, I really just had a very, very high risk tolerance to being able to make big changes, mm -hmm. all because I was terrified of being in the same situation that my mom would have been in. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, so that's really how, and I had to learn how to do things differently. Because there was a, a hundred times if there was one where I am sitting at the leadership table surrounded by men, the only woman, the youngest woman, and uneducated. And if you want to talk about imposter syndrome and feeling like I don't belong here every single day, that was my best friend. Wow. And, um, and so I just learned different ways to be successful. I learned different ways to attack a problem. And because I didn't have all the pedigree and I didn't have the education or the experience, my approach was always different because it's not what they were teaching you in college. Yes, and, uh, and that's, I think, really where this, um, you know, high to risk tolerance, I want to have fun. You know, I'm a big advocate. If you don't like it, change it. And, uh, you know, and I just continue to do that throughout my personal life and throughout my career. Amazing, amazing. Let's talk about the beauty of, being in the being out of your being out of your uncomfort zone being out of, out of the comfort zone right um it provides that heightened sense of constant movement right you, you're in a survival of a survival state but at the same time you know you have to constantly work you either work or you're going to get crushed so Correct. let's talk about how being in that state helped you to thrive helped you to propel yourself to the next step when you are doing something, and I, what, what works for me the best when I'm in and out of my comfort zone, which is where I prefer to be, um, is treating it like an experiment. Mm, it's almost okay. like, what does this button do, right? And if you push that button, let's see what happens. And you know, if you get zapped, then you know not to push that button again. Um, and so when you're uncomfortable, it's because you're in an environment that you've never been in before. And if you treat it like I'm supposed to know what I'm supposed to do here, you're going to drive yourself crazy, stress yourself out, lose all sleep and just, you know, you'll be a hot mess. But if you come at it with this experimental mindset and if you come at things with this is a learning opportunity and I've, I've learned because, you know, I have made more mistakes than I've actually, you know, hit home runs. And but I've learned the art of failing forward. And I think that's the important part is not letting my failures, of which there were plenty, define me. But it's like, what I learn? And, uh, you know, what did I learn out of this? What do I want to keep? What do I want to do differently next time? And really use that as an opportunity to continue to grow. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and that's, that's really how I survive and thrive in that, you know, place where you are just out of your comfort zone. Yes, indeed. You know what? The funny thing is. I do a lot of research on success, right? I, I love to research successful people. And the majority of successful people have the same type of path, right? They are innovative. They are um, pragmatic in terms of the, their approach. And they're constantly working towards being better. For instance, look at Thomas Edison, right? He failed thousands of times when, before he even got to the point to create the, the light bulb. Right. Even yeah. even um, Henry Ford, he had a fourth grade education. Right. And he yes. became one of the most successful innovators and businessmen within the world. So it's the mindset. <laughs> it's the mindset is very, very similar. Right. So. Yes, it absolutely is. And it's hard to rebound from failure. It's hard to rebound from rejection. Mm -hmm. And I think when you start to realize it's not the person, it's the action. You know, people are not rejecting you as a person. They're just rejecting your idea or exactly. your concept or whatever. And, you know, no, never applied to me, even as a kid. Right. I mean, I was like, OK, that, those rules apply to everybody else other than me. And so that's kind of how I live my life. And whenever I hear no, which has been plenty of times, mm -hmm. I didn't look at it as, oh, I'm done. I have to stop. What I, I looked at is I just got to find another way to yes. Okay. And so I'm not going to get there the way I thought I was. I'm still going to get there. So how do I do that? And what other paths do I have to take? Most of them were a lot longer, um, but it's an adventure along the way. And you learn as you go. And that's where I love to help my clients. And when I was back in corporate leadership, um, because I was I'm a transformation expert. That was what I did on Wall Street. If it was broken, okay. I loved to fix it. 
running into those burning buildings when everybody else is running out. And so my team had to have a lot of courage to back up the promises I was making. And uh, a lot of people don't come with that, you know, in terms of just that natural fortitude. And so I spent a lot of time working with my teams, helping them build that level of resilience and that, you know, that experimental mindset, which has been, you know, fun in corporate to help us be successful. And then that's transferred very nicely into the coaching practice that I have now, too. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So your transition from Wall Street um, to becoming a coach, right? That's a that's a huge difference from being corporate Wall Street, the hustle and bustle um, yeah. of, of Manhattan, right? Um, what made you to decide to just throw everything away and to go towards the coaching um, route? Um, because my job didn't light me up anymore. Because I got the Sunday blues. I was not excited about the work. It just felt like no matter which company I worked for, it was the same crap, different acronym. Um, And it wasn't fair to me. It wasn't fair to my team. It wasn't fair to the companies that I worked for. Uh, I just stopped giving a crap, quite frankly. Didn't care. And, um, And I'm a big advocate, like I said before, is if you don't like it, change it. Mm-hmm. And and so that's really where and I've always thought, oh, I'll do coaching in my soft retirement. I have no idea what that actually meant, but that was as far as I got in my thinking. And I was like, you know what? Maybe now is the right time. Maybe now when I've got the energy, you know, I've got some capital that I can work with and, you know, I've got the moxie to still do these things and I don't have the responsibilities of caring for anybody other than myself. Um, You know, because for me, I was like, what's the worst that happens? I'm an epic failure and I end up sleeping on my mom's couch for six months while I get my act back together. I was like, okay, I can do that. Um, You know, so so the coaching for me lit me up Okay. um, because now I was excited about the investor calls when I worked on Wall Street. Like, are we going to get our butts kicked? What is the earnings call going to be? How's that all going to work? Um, you know, is my project going to get approved? How's this governance meeting going to go? All of those things excited me, and I just lost my passion for it. And oh, now yeah. I'm able to put that energy and and get my fix, my passion, through other people's successes. Mm-hmm. And being able, because there are so many talented people that are just stuck on the sidelines. Yes, not because they're not smart not because they're not ambitious it's because they don't know how the game is played and that's where my break all the rules approach because if you follow the rules that's why you get left behind Mm. and you gotta know the right rules to follow you know to break because if you break the wrong ones you end up getting fired right i got fired twice so trust me i know which one's not (laughs) um but my passion really moved from business results to the human Mm. result and um you know and i had found that passion as i was losing my mojo at work and losing my interest in the work, I really moved to my team in terms of my team development while I was in corporate. And I'm like, you know, I want to do this for a living. I want to have this feeling every day mm-hmm. that people are, are having breakthroughs. They're feeling unstuck. They're feeling empowered, um, you know, and they're just getting through the mess in terms of you really wanting to have that next big thing for themselves and not knowing how to get it. And so that's really what drew me to coaching. And, uh, and that's what's going to keep me here for sure. That's incredible right there. So Timmy, Who's your target clientele? Who do you work with primarily? Primarily, I work with mid to senior level leaders okay. in the financial services and STEM industries. Um, you know, financial services is my background, and I've got a lot of risk compliance and audit and tech and ops type stuff. So most of my clients are people who are in the same industries and doing the same work that I did as I was coming through the ranks. Okay. Um, you know, so that is my core audience. But I've got people from everywhere. But, you know, in terms of fashion and pharmace- pharmaceutical and healthcare, you know, so people come in. But my target is really mid to senior level leaders that want to either change careers or they're at the C-suite for the first time and don't want to get crushed. So I can help them with that, too. Got you. Got you. You know, you are a ray of energy. You know, I'm pretty sure once you walk in the room, you brighten up the whole room. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a high energy girl. Guilty as charged. <laughs> That's awesome right there. Awesome. So if someone were looking for a coach, what traits would you advise for them to look for? The first thing I would advise them to do is look inside. Are okay. you ready? Um, because you may want coaching. You may not be ready for coaching for a million different reasons in terms of time. Because to get the most out of any coaching engagement, I'm sure you know this as well, you got to put in the work. You know, coaches do not have pixie dust, so they're not going to be able to sprinkle a little pixie dust and fix all your things. you got to do the work. Um, and so that's the first thing I recommend is, is this the right time for you? Do you have that time for you? Um, and then once you've decided, yeah, this is the time for me, then I would encourage you look for fit first. 
you got to have somebody that you vibe with and that somebody that, you know, just gets you and kind of finishes your sentences for you. And you want somebody who's going to be your Yoda and, uh, you know, and kind of guide you through that process. So I would encourage making sure that you have a really good fit and that the coach um, has, if possible, done work close to what you're doing and achieved what you want to achieve for yourself. It's a lot easier if they've walked that path before. Mm -hmm. And then the last thing is that they've helped others doing it. Yes, you know, indeed. one of the things I realized very early on is coaching and leadership are not the same. So the techniques that I used with my team when I was in corporate are very, very different than the techniques that I've used with hundreds of clients at this point. Right. So um, so you want to make sure that the coach that you that you decide to work with has not only been in your shoes and been successful, but also has helped others get there as well. Amazing. Amazing. Can you highlight that um, that statement you just mentioned? Coaching and leadership are not the same all right I, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure a lot of people get confused with that so can you, can you break down the difference yeah um you know in leadership at some point in time it's not a democracy right you know and so um so you can have all the debate you can be as collaborative as you want but at the end of the day at some point in time it's gonna be like you know what i'm the one getting fired for this decision so we're gonna go this way um you know on from a coaching perspective you are trying to get somebody who you don't know all the time and you don't work with all the time and that you don't know as well as you do the team that work is, that you're working with. Um, trying to get through those boundaries, trying to get through um, what's on the entire horizon for them, not just this one specific project or issue or whatever. And um, I, my blend is more of a coach sultant is what I call it, right? Okay. I'm not your traditional coach that will sit there and ask you 700 questions until you finally get the right answer. Although there's a lot of value to that process in terms of appreciative inquiry and stuff like that. But I will Will be the kind of coach that wants you to get you there your own way but if i know the answer i'm just going to tell you what to do right and say okay this is what worked for me go give that a try and see how that plays for you um you know so in in coaching most of the people are making their own way and they are charting their own path and they're more i think they open up more too right because it's a safe place yeah, you can tell me stuff that I, they would never say at the office or ask me questions that they would never ask, say out loud, um, you know, with the people that they work with. So it's that safe zone. Uh -huh. And uh, and so you're working with some within some confines and you actually, you know, can call the ultimate decisions in the office in terms of leadership development. And then coaching, obviously, is, is much more directed by the by the person who's being coached. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So before becoming a coach, did, did you also work with a coach um, prior to that? I have had lots of mentors um, okay. and I've had lots of corporate training, um, which I, you know, I've had some of the best mentors and advocates and, and you know, and sponsors that just helped shape my career. Mm -hmm. And uh, and these people saw more in me than I ever could and put me in situations that I'm like, I don't belong here, but I'm like, I guess somebody does. Right? And so, um, you know, so that's really where I learned um, how to emulate the strong leaders and the leaders that actually invested in their people and weren't just looking out for themselves, which is hard to find on Wall Street, quite frankly. Um, you know, and so, so I, you know, while I never hired a personal coach or a professional coach until I started my business, because when I started this, I was a hot mess. You know, going from corporate to entrepreneurship, and that's hard. Um, this is the hardest thing I've ever done, right? And uh, and so I was a hot mess, and I'm like, absolutely need a coach to help me through this stuff. Um, but in my professional career, it was very much strong mentorship and uh, and strong people within the organization that really were my sponsors and and the people that I looked to in terms of how do I emulate and create a leadership approach and style that felt authentic, but was really important, you know, to deliver the results that I needed to deliver as well. Yes, indeed. And, and, and I, I, love, I love your method, right? Um, break all the rules, right? Go against the, the green. Um, because being innovative, that's, that's where genius lie, right? Um, so I want you to share with us, right? Share a time where you help to take one of your coaching clients over and above a hurdle and towards success, right? Using your method, using your method. So talk yeah. to me about that. Oh, there's there's so many when I when I'm like okay which one do I pick right how do I talk about this? Um, and and so I picked one to talk about today that is pretty consistent right with the people that I work with okay. in terms of you know this was a leader who had spent over 20 years in the same organization 
and they kept getting promoted and they kept getting more responsibility and everything was great. Money was great. Job became easier as they moved up the ladder. Um, but they started to feel like they were on the outside looking in. You know, mm. reworks happen, you know, mergers and acquisitions happen, leadership, you know, philosophies change and, you know, and it's a young man's games or a woman's game. So whenever you do that, like they started to realize that, hmm, I don't have that sphere of influence that I used to have. I'm not in the inner circle anymore like I used to be. And when they actually stopped and looked at it, they're miserable. Like they hated what they were doing, mm. but it was comfortable. You know, they he, they knew what they had. You know, it's like, I know my people, my people know me. It's easy, but I hate what I'm doing. And so we took this person who's an investment banking and financial services and really helped them pivot into something that they had never done before. And what they're doing now is they're essentially a hired gun for a private equity firm. And so this person's background was a chief operating officer. So really strong in operations. Okay. And they decided they're working for a small company. It's like a private equity firm of maybe a dozen people and they invest in startup companies, but these startup companies don't have the money to hire a COO and they don't have the bank to bring in the best that the industry has to offer. But the PE firms want to protect their investment. And so they were really able to take all of their knowledge and not take a step back, which is what most people are afraid of, but to take a step forward. Because not only now are they lit up every day because they're helping baby companies become viable and they're not lit up every day because they're, you know, they're doing things that feed their passion and that is really in their zone of genius, but they're making a boatload more money because they're getting a big salary that they're used to and equity in all the small companies that the PE company um, invests in. So that really helps them well. Okay. Um, you know, so there's a lot of options for people to be able to say, I need to transfer all the things I did to something that I want to do that serves me. And that's just one quick example. And that's amazing right there. Amazing. Thanks for sharing that story. You know, you're know, right. It's all about, you know, you have to switch things up a bit, right? You, you can't yeah. be afraid to step back, step sideways. It's not It's not just a one um, a one dimension kind of approach, right? Yeah, yeah it's, it's multifaceted. It is. You know? And everybody's journey is unique. And what I like to do is I've got a process I take my people through. So the process is consistent. So I know I can rely on it. But the journey is so unique. And mm -hmm. it's just individual. And, and that's where the fun comes. You know, people get stuck at different places and they surge at different times. And all of that stuff is just, um, just fun to see how everybody finally gets to where they go. And, you know, I'm finding that people are defining success differently now. Yes. And my biggest win this week to love to share this is two of my clients, two of my clients turned down the perfect job offers because it did not serve them. It did Ooh. not give them what they wanted in terms of their, their life balance, in terms of, you know, their ability to make an impact and all of those things. So right company names, right paycheck, right, all right title, wrong culture. And mm. they turned them down. So how fun is that to have people finally give, and one of my clients like, thank you for giving me permission to say no. Mm. I've never given myself permission to do that before. Wow. That's and, a powerful uh, statement right there. Right. It's huge. And so, but, and I do believe strongly that when you say no, you open up the ability for the right thing to say yes to. Yes, and, um, you know, and so that's, uh, you know, so those are some of the big wins. It's just, you know, knowing what to say no to because it just doesn't serve you and being clear on what does. You know, so what you just mentioned is actually, um, it's a line with, my personal value, right? So my personal value as, as a man, as Thomas Johnson, is God, then peace of mind, then family, and everything else, right? Yeah. Peace yes. of mind is so, so critical. Without yes. your peace of mind, how can you expect to be your full authentic self and and deliver your all, right? You need your You're 100% right. right. You can't show up big if you're not at your best. And, uh, and you are the only engine driving all the things for you. And so you got to treat it well. And uh, and when you treat it well, it'll show up big for you when you need it. It definitely will. It definitely will. So I want you to talk to us about being in this amazing island in Belize right now, right? How has, it, your mind? How has, it, how has it transformed you internally, externally, externally, internally? Like, talk to us about that real quick. We, we're all curious. Oh, yeah, it's just... I didn't know what to expect. Obviously, moving from Manhattan to a small tropical island, I did not know what to expect. And um, and it is it has impacted me more personally than I than I get I thought it would. In okay. terms of I feel like we have stepped back into the 80s. 
<laughs> people actually know the names of their neighbors and care about what's going on without being too nosy. Um, you know, people are not on their phones 24 seven. They make eye contact. You say good morning. You to, you know, you know, it's just, it's just the culture here is absolutely amazing. You know, there's a big expat community and the Belizean culture is fantastic in terms of warm and approachable. And just, it is, it is absolutely a, just a giant family. Um, and, but the, the biggest thing I didn't expect is that being out of the daily stress of living in the States mm -hmm. has given me more energy and more vibrancy to show up bigger for my clients. Mm, um, I when it. I go back, I feel stressed and I feel like all the fear mongering, all the news, all the negativity, all the fighting, all the things that I'm like, there's a lot of stress going on here. And so, um, you know, most of my clients are from the U S and, and that's where my company is still based out of because we have a place in Connecticut. Um, but just not being in that environment 24 seven allows me the space to breathe and to mm -hmm. think and just to be really fully present for my clients who are still navigating those, you know, that environment. Right. So that's amazing right there. And plus we scuba dive a couple times a week, just saying. <laughs> <laughs> scuba dive a couple of times a week. That's amazing right <laughs> <Yeah>. there. <laughs> exactly. I was like, Ooh. you know, so yes, we love to get any day in the fish tanks a good day. So uh, it's, it's got the second largest barrier reef system in the world. Yeah. And um, so scuba diving is a huge thing here and we are big divers. So uh, it's not uncommon to do a one tank dive before we start work in the morning and then uh, make sure we get some in over the weekend as well. That's incredible. You know, next time um, I decided to travel towards that region, I'm going to contact you. <laughs> it is open and uh, and I'm a, obviously a huge fan and I'm going to, uh, you know, send BTB, which is uh, the tourism board, my, uh, you know, my bill for the promotion later. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So, um, Tammy, like, I love the energy. I love everything you stand for. You know, you are an amazing person. I'm glad we actually met. Um, Me too. So are you currently working on any new projects that you could share with us um, today? Yeah. Yeah, there's some cool stuff going on right now. Um, I've just launched this year something called the Career Success Lab. Okay. And um, and what this is, is this is an on-demand resource for, you know, mid to senior level professionals at any point in time in their career. So whether you are job hunting because you want to stay in the same industry, you want a career change, you want to get promoted, or just accelerate in your is all the things you possibly need to be able to navigate that. Because what I've found is that first of all, you need to take control of your career. Because if you are not the CEO of your career, you can't count on anyone else to do that for you. And mm -hmm. the you know the corporate world right now is not putting any time or effort into development. They're just not. And so unless you take matters into your own hands, you're not going to grow. But where do you go? And so that's why I created the career. Success Lab because it is an on-demand resource. You need to have a difficult conversation. You can figure out how to do that. You know, you need to do a strategy deck for something. You can figure out how to do that, or you know, state your values so you can get a promotion. So there's all kinds of stuff that come in there, and you know, and that's in addition to the group and the private coaching that we do. Um, and there's monthly challenges to keep people motivated and focused. And so that is my new baby right now. And, uh, you okay. know, so it's a monthly subscription. It's only $39 a month. So it's super reasonable oh, wow. uh, for people to come into you. And it's just, and it keeps getting bigger every day because I keep putting more stuff in. Um, okay. So that is my latest project for this year. Okay. Okay. That's awesome right there. So Tammy, yeah. if someone were to inquire about your services or just want to connect with you because you're so awesome, where can <laughs> they find you? Obviously here on LinkedIn, right? So we can definitely find me on LinkedIn uh, at Tammy Alvarez or at the Career Winner Circle uh, company okay. page. And then you can also find us at careerwinnerscircle.com. Schedule some time with me. I love to meet people and to see where you are on your journey. It's not a sales call. It's an intro call. So it's a big, giant yellow button. As soon as you get on our website, you can't miss it. So if you want to spend some time one-on-one -on -one with me, um, feel free to hit up our website and schedule some time there as well. Awesome. Tammy, once again, thank you for coming on today's so episode. How may I serve you? Like I said, I love thank your you. energy. I love everything you're about. And also, thank I would like to thank all of our listeners for lending us the ears and the eyeballs. But last but not least, this is my last question to you for today, Tammy. How may I serve you? <laughs> you have served me already because this lights me up. Um, you know, I love the opportunity to, you know, share my story and to hear about other people's stories and to really get out there and make a difference. So, um, you know, so I, I love what you are doing. I love the mission based work and, um, and I aspire to be just like you one day. <laughs> Likewise. <laughs> <laughs>
So, um, again, this is your host, Thomas Johnson. If you enjoyed today's episode, please feel free to share it with someone else that will benefit. And make sure to tune in for next week's episode. Take care, be blessed, and cheers. We out. Thank you.